Hello everybody, welcome to this video where I'm going to briefly explain the key quotations that I've featured in the Frankenstein revision song. So there are seven quotations. Thank you to Martha Solomon who helped me out with the quotations. So let's just talk through them. One of the main things you're going to write about when you're writing about Frankenstein is this idea of nature versus nurture. You know, are people inherently good, inherently bad, or is it the actual um, upbringing, the life they have that makes them good and bad. And that's something that's explored throughout the text. So I think it's really important that there are quotations that cover that text, that sort of theme. And the first one is this amazing quotation from the creature, I was benevolent and good, misery made me a fiend. And this is really the idea that we are all born Good. This is one of Mary Shelley's themes in the text, the nature versus nurture debate, and that you know the the circumstances we endure make us uh, you know good or bad. Um, but um, a really good quotation there, and you can actually analyse the use of sophisticated language like benevolent, um, which is something that um, makes the creature seem very intelligent and articulate, and challenges our preconceived ideas about. The creature, knowing this is the uh, the sort of Russian doll narrative that it is at, at times it's you know uh, Walton retelling Frankenstein's story, who himself is retelling the creature's story, and yet to have this articulate and sophisticated language still pervade through that narrative style shows just how intelligent and articulate the creature is, which again challenges our preconceived ideas and actually challenges the presentation of. Um, the creature from Frankenstein himself. I kept my workshop of filthy creation. This is a really good quotation because up until this point um, in the novel, we've had Frankenstein really think that what he is doing is very, very good. But here we have such an interesting juxtaposition of language, filthy creation, that the positive creation, which should be a good thing, and certainly the motives that inspired Frankenstein were supposedly good, but the realisation that it's all come to uh, cause chaos is seen in the word filthy, which is this very negative word. And what we can really talk about here is that, to begin with, Victor Frankenstein almost thought that this sort of his mission was divine. Um, and this phrase shows us the fact that the brute reality of what he is doing has dawned on him. He's essentially, you know, conducting uh, these horrible, gory experiments, um, doing something that he's later gone on to realise was totally wrong. And, and this quotation is a sort of the realisation that what he's doing is wrong. Shall I not then hate them who abhor me, and my hatred and revenge burst all bounds of moderation? Are two quotations that are similar. The first is spoken by the creature, and the second by Frankenstein. And what I love about these two quotations is that they show the similarities between Frankenstein and the creature, who are ultimately um, struggling with this anger and desire for um, revenge and suffering. Now again, the first one, shall I not then hate them who are bore me, is the nature-nurture de uh, debate, and, and that's a good quotation for that. But the similarity between Frankenstein and his creature, that's something that I go into in my Frankenstein ebook at mrbruff.com, by the way, is something that I think is quite interesting to explore. So two quotations there together. And then as I was rereading the novel recently, I was really struck by how the wording used used to name the creature changes throughout the text. So in chapter 5, the climax of the novel, when Dr Frankenstein finally brings uh, his creation to life, the first word he uses to describe it is creature, as in creation, something created. And this has the sort of language, almost biblical language, of the creation story of, of um, Genesis. In the same chapter, though, on seeing the harsh reality of what he's done, he describes the creature as a wretch, and by chapter 8, as a demon. And I think it would be a very nice thing to just incorporate these three words into your answer uh, to show the development of 
the treatment of the creature. And again, the nature-nurture debate, how was he ever going to have this happy life when he's misjudged and mistreated in such a way that within moments of creating this being, it moves from creature to wretch, basically writes off the character and determines the rest of his life. And that all comes into fate, which is such a key thing. If you read the book, particularly the early chapters are all about fate. The idea that the events in our life are predetermined and set. That's exactly what we see from somebody who, within seconds of being alive, is called a wretch. He's fated to have this uh, horrible existence. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, I know the song is, you know, I'm not a singer, I'm not a guitarist, I'm not a professional, but I know that it just helps to stick things in your head through music. So um, I hope you found that interesting and uh, please do subscribe to the channel.